Hi students, welcome to the session in lectures and welcome to the new playlist of the material testing lab, strength of materials lab. In today's class, we shall see how to connect the tensile test on the molecular guard to establish the stress strain curve using the answers universal testing machine. Before we see the actual discussion, let us see the brief of the speaker that I got ready to be from our paid by BTEC in Sydney from Nagar University in 1994 and MTEC section in from J to Hyderabad in 2000. And PhD section from J to Hyderabad in 2009. Present, I am working as professor of the department of civil engineering, University College of Engineering, Osman University, Hyderabad, Telangana State. I have experience of 27 years of uh, uh, in 27 years uh, in of which seven years is in industry, 20 years is in uh, teaching at uh, graduate and postgraduate levels. My research areas include reinforced cement concrete design, steel sector design, sector analysis, fine element analysis, earthquake engineering, bridge engineering, and structural optimization. I published 45 research papers in international and national journals and conferences, organized three international conferences and 11 national conferences, workshops, attended 43 workshops, visited two countries, delivered 13 guest lectures, edited three books. Supervising 14 PhD scholars and supervised 30 MP theses. I am actively involved in various consultancy works that are offered by the department and completed over 70 design proof checks and 150 designs of the RCC, steel, composite, low rise, high rise, multi short buildings, as well as road and rail bridges. Once we see this, let us move quickly to that of the <coughs> discussion student trade. Right? We'll be uh, 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 seeing this discussion in three parts. One, <coughs> one is that. Uh, and the first part, um, what is the aim, what is the apparatus, what is the theory, and uh, description about the machine, right? Description of the, about the machine, and finally we will see the processor in the first part. And in the second part, we will like to go to the experimental setup, we will conduct the experiment and get the different observations, different observations, right? Whereas in the third part, we will see how to calculate. Uh, starting from the fundamentals theory and to establish the results, establish the results as well as what are the graphical results as well as the table calculations and what are the inferences also, right? That is what we will see in three parts, right? Now, let us see first the first part uh, uh, the tension test, right? Whereas the aim is to determine the stretching characteristics of the mild steel, right? Uh, given mild steel rod, one that is the limit of proportionality. The second one is the uh, elastic limit. The third one is the yield stress. Fourth one is the um, uh, ultimate stress. Fifth one is the breaking stress. Uh, sixth one is the proof resilience. Sixth one is resilience and fracture. And uh, the uh, eighth one is the percentage of elongation of a given mild steel rod, like this, right? Whereas the apparatus is, is the Amstel's universal testing machine, right, with autographic arrangement for the record of the stress strain curve, right, as well as Amstel's planimeter. <coughs> now, let us see the, the theory part of the where in, uh, in investigating the mechanical properties of the material, the uh, relation between the stress and uh, corresponding strain is usually represented graphically by the stress strain uh, diagram obtained experimentally from a tensile or compressive test. Generally, we will be using here a tensile test. Right? A typical load extension diagram for the mild steel rod is shown in the figure where the axial strain are plotted uh, as abscissa and the corresponding nominal stresses are given by ordinate of the curve, O-L-E-Y-U-B. Now, let me show that uh, graph. This is a typical stress strain uh, diagram for the mild steel rod, right? Where where here the loads are there on the y axis as well as the extensions or deformations are, are there on the uh, x axis, right? Now, however, let us see um, once, uh, 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 however, from O to L in this uh, stress strain curve from O to L from origin, uh, once the load is operated, right, obviously it will move from O to L. The stress is directly proportional to the strain, and the proportional limit as represented by the point is no longer proportional to the strain, right? However, the elastic limit is represented by the point E is defined as the maximum stress that can be applied to the material. Uh, to be within elastic state without producing a permanent plastic deformation when the load is removed, right? Now, upon the further increase of the load, the elongation increases more rapidly and the, the diagram becomes a non-linear, 
However, at elongations of the uh, specimen to take place uh, without any appreciable increase in the load and the material is said to be, uh, become plastic. This phenomena is called the yielding, right? And this part is what the yielding student, right? And this is how the yield plateau, right? Yield plateau, right? Then, um, next, at uh, the point, uh, at, at the point S, uh, the material begins to st strain harden that is it takes a little further load up to the point u which is ultimate point right representing the maximum tensile uh, load called ultimate stress right beyond the point u further stretching of the uh, bar is accompanied by the decrease in the load and fracture takes place at b right where b is called the breaking point right the <clears throat> The fact that the nominal stresses uh, at B is less than the ultimate stress at U is somewhat um, misleading, right? The fracture in ductile material, mild shale, is a shear fracture along 45 degree planes and is of cup and cone form. Brittle fracture, as in the case of the cast iron, occurs without plastic deformation over a cross-sectional uh, perpendicular to the axis of the specimen, right? Now, once we see uh, uh, briefly about uh, the <clears throat> theory student, now let us see uh, uh, the description of the machine, Amster, that of the Amsterdam Universal Testing Machine. This this machine, right? Uh, let us see this uh, brief uh, uh, description at a quicker pace, right? Whereas uh, the load measuring frame consists of uh, two expansion heads, right? A and B, right? Uh, these are the two expansion heads, A and B student, right? Uh, right? Uh, this is the two heads A and B wherein, uh, wherein which can be mounted on the specimen under test A rod uh, A rod capital R is attached right A rod capital um, R is attached to the expansion head A and the tube uh, T to the uh, head B when the heads are mounted the rod R gets into the tube capital T uh, on one end of the strings S is tied to the hook K and passes over the pulleys P1, P2, P3. A dead weight W is attached to the other end of the string. Right? When the load is applied to the specimen A, B are separated due to the expansion and um, uh, and B takes position B prime. Now I will show that one also. Right? Um, this is all right. These are the loads that are attached, right? Uh, B takes a new position, B prime, because of this expansion, which are measured over a length of uh, gauge length of 20 centimeter, right? Now, these are the uh, rod, uh, specimen rod R, right? And these are what the points we are referring to, right? Uh, referring to, right? Now, um, next, right? <clears throat> Consequently, K is pulled to the position K prime and W will go to W prime. As the string passes around the pulley P3, drum, uh, drum capital D will rotate, thereby reading the elongation along the circumference of the drum. Right now, I'll show that uh, uh, drum also. Right, this is how uh, over this drum the deformations are measured. Load versus the deformations are measured, student. Right now, next. <coughs> Next one is uh, this is how the stress strain curve just now we have seen right uh, uh, this is what uh, the schematic of uh, displacement of the rod over a strain uh, sorry uh, over a length of 20 centimeter 20 centimeter right and uh, this is what uh, exactly now we have seen the schematic right where this k1 is the crank for adjusting the grip edges right and k2 is a crank for rapid adjustment right this one and g this g is a gear gear for changing the speed and uh, this is the gear for changing the uh, speed student right and this is the motor this is the motor right and uh, where v is a variable head v is a variable head let me show this right a variable head right uh, this one right this is the variable head V, right? This one, right? Wherein we can vary the load either to 0.5 ton, right? Or to uh, 2.5 ton or to 5 tons, right? To 5 tons, right? Now I am using uh, 2.5 tons here by adding this weight, right? If I remove this, then at maximum I can use per 0.5 ton. Even by putting this weight, even I can adjust at the rear side. To 5 tons right that is of the arrangement arrangement <clears throat> then 
and next one is the this uh, dial for indicating this load dial for indicating this load let me show this uh, on this uh, right this is what d is a dial for indicating the load and r is the uh, recording drum and p is the locking pin and this already just shown right this is the recording um, sorry this is a drum this is the drum right once we see the different components of this uh, um, Amstel's uh, universal testing machine. Now let us see the procedure, student. Right? Take a quicker pace. <coughs> Sorry, right? Fix the specimen in the uh, wedges and mount the strain measuring frame over the specimen. Right? Start the experiment um, machine in tension direction and strain the specimen at uh, in slow gear. As the strain increases, the graph between the load and the extension will be recorded automatically and finally the specimen breaks. Right? Note on the ultimate load from the dial gauge also, from the dial uh, gauge also, right? And draw a baseline by rotating the drum and take out the paper from the drum. Now, now draw a perpendicular from the breaking point B to the baseline, right? Intersecting it at uh, B prime, find out the area of the diagram O, L, E, Y, S, U, B, B prime by planimeter and compute the values as given below. Now we will see, right? However, uh, let capital R be the radius of the drum and small r be the radius of the pulley. For an actual elongation of 2 pi r in, uh, in the specimen, the pulley will rotate will uh, ro rotate once and the drum will also, uh, will also rotate simultaneously representing 2 pi r as recorded um, uh, elongations. That means, uh, uh, score on the abscissa represents an elongation of r by r centimeters, right? Now, when the load increases, the pencil moves axially on the drum. Uh, it is found that at uh, load of 2500 kg, the pencil travels a distance of 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters in the traverse direction, in the traverse direction, right? That, that makes one centimeter upon ordinate equal to a load of 250 kg kg from 1 to 2 on uh, means 1 centimeter on the graph represents a work of 250 kg multiplied by r by r centimeter right that is how 250 r by r kg centimeter uh, that much of um, work is being done right this is the graph uh, constant and so if the area of the graph that is the um, diagram o l e y s u b b prime is s centimeters squ square and the volume of the specimen is v centimeter cube for a, a gauge length of 20 centimeter then the work done in breaking the specimen is 250 small r by capital r multiplied by s kg centimeters right now <clears throat> this is of the uh, processor um, brief processor student right um, however <clears throat> will now go for the conducting the experiment. Now let us see the experiment student. Right? As we shall see the material testing lab in which in today's class we shall see the tension test on a mild steel rod on a mild steel rod wherein we wish to find the stress strain characteristics of this given mild steel specimen. A specimen is given of appropriate diameter. we will see that right. Therefore, I want to find out the stress strain characteristics of this mild steel specimen for which we will have this experimental setup where this apparatus, this experimental setup is what called the Amstler's Universal Testing Machine. Amstler's Universal Testing Machine, right? Now this is how, uh, this is there in the FPS system to the right, uh, where, where the specimen, once the specimen is given, we need to measure the diameter of the specimen using the vernier calipers, right? Therefore, you measure at three different locations, right? And take that in a tabular format, right? Main scale reading, vernier coincidence, right? Then you will get the final reading, right? Take average of these three as the diameter, right? Once you measure that, now this length of the specimen is, uh, 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 the gauge distance is 20 centimeter. For, for measurement of the deformations, right? Deformations, we do have the gauge length as 20 centimeter, right? Whereas this specimen is fixed in the wedges, right? At the top, now we do have this the top wedge, right? Even at the bottom, the wedges are there. However, these are fixed in jaws, right? In jaws, right? Now you can see at the top, so that the specimen will not slip. 
a specimen, we learn to take back, yeah, but this length is called the gauge length, which is 20 centimeter or 200 mm, for which the deformations are measured. The deformations are measured, or that is called the gauge length. Right? 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 Well, sir, we fix the specimen, right? Now, uh, this Amstel's universal testing machine will be working on the principle of the hydraulic machines, right? Once I turn on the motor, right? Turn on the motor, right? Then obviously, uh, after uh, applying the gear, right? The entire pressure due to the fluids, the, due to fluids, right? Hydraulic pressures will be applied through the wedges at the other end. Now, please see that, right? This is fixed, fixed wedge. This will not move. Whereas this is a movable wedge, movable wedge, right? Therefore, once the pressure is applied, right, this will be rotating in order to apply the tension force, the tension force, right? Therefore, this wedge will be moving down, moving down, so that it will be subjected to tensile force. However, all those forces can be seen on this load dial gauge, load dial gauge, right? Now. Here we can see that at maximum, at maximum we can measure up to 2.5 tons, 2.5 tons, right? Whereas even I can change, right? At the other, at the back end, I do have an arrangement, I have an arrangement wherein, wherein even I can fix this to at maximum of 0.5 tons, or or even I can fix to 2.5 tons. Now at present. I am using 2.5 tons maximum, right? 2.5 tons, right? And likewise, even I can fix it to 5 tons, 5 tons also, the third arrangement, right? Wherein I need to put additional load here, right? So this is now the load, load dial gauge and load dial gauge, right? And once I apply the loading, obviously this entire weight will move about a fulcrum leading to the forces leading to the application of the forces that was also I will show. Right? So this is the dial gauge today. and now we do have the extensometer um, uh, here over which the deformations are measured right? over the gauge length right? and however we are not going to draw any graph the stress strain graph we are not going to draw this is autographic arrangement is there in this Amstel's universal testing machine, right? How that now I'll show, right? You can see that the at the two edges over this dial gauge, right? Right? We do have a string, a string attached, a string attached, right? Which is running over the pulleys, over the pulleys, and and over the pulleys, right? And the deformations, the deformations. Due to the application of the load, due to the application of the load will be will be automatically drawn by this autographic arrangement. Autographic arrangement over this drum, right? Once I switch on the motor, motor then obviously, right? This drum will be rotating and an automatic graph will be captured by this arrangement, right? Now let us start the experiment, student, right? Now uh, I am just turning on, turning on the motor, right? And and once I turn on the motor, turn on the motor, then what I will do? What I will do is I'll, I'll apply, I'll apply the gear, I'll apply the gear. Then I will just turn on the motor, and we are we are putting in gear mode. We are putting in gear mode. Now you can see that once I put this in the gear mode, gear mode. Now you can see that load is being applied. This is rotating this load is being applied to the specimen, to the specimen, right? And uh, here simultaneously you can see that right, a, a plot is. Drawn by the autograph uh, automatic arrangement, right? Now you can see that this drum is moving, right? And 
plot is being drawn automatically automatically right and once we see we see that right there is a change in load there is a change in load Specimen has broken. The specimen has broken. Therefore, now I can find out. I can find out right? what is the um, diameter at the breaking point. At the breaking point, this I can measure once again. This I can measure right using the vendor calipers. Right? Using the vendor calipers that I have measured. That I have measured. Therefore, it is now 5.31 mm. Now I can find out the area at the breaking point. And also radius of the pulley that I already showed, right? Is actually I got the diameter. I got the diameter as a 26.04 mm. There I already showed, right? Adjusted to the uh, drum on the right hand side, right? Adjusted to the drum. This is the uh, pulley student. This is the drum. This is the drum, right? Therefore, these we already measured using the vernier calipers. Now I got. That the radius of pulley, right? The diameter of the pulley was uh, 26.04 mm. Therefore, radius of the pulley is equal to 13.02 mm. And also, radius of the drum, radius of the uh, drum is the diameter. What I measured that divided by two is 28.05 mm. Actually, I got the uh, diameter as 56.1 mm. Therefore, the radius is 28.05 mm. Right? These are the observations after conducting this experiment, right? Now, I'll uh, next observation is that next observation is that uh, now I do have I do have that plot that uh, plot, right? Which is uh, indicated here, right? Which is indicated here, right? The plot is indicated like this. Where now I'll show the exact plot, the exact plot, right? Therefore, I have just taken out that and uh, now I got now I got uh, the plot like this. Therefore, this is a real, um, uh, real plot. What, what I got, right? Therefore, this is how, right? Uh, the uh, zero load and up to yield, yield, right? Now let me show on the blackboard, right? Therefore, it is starting from zero load and it is going up to the uh, proportional limit, right? Then there, uh, there is small with small increment in the load, right? There is a disproportionate increase in the. Deflection or deformation. Therefore, that is how it is noted as the lower yield. Lower yield, right? Even at the same load, right? There is a uh, large deformation happening, right? Therefore, uh, there is a small increment in load, but 
even sometimes this upper yield and lower yield may be there, may not be there. However, in our plot, in our plot, we do have both of these, right? However, in some specimen that may be there or may not be there, right? That is a uh, specimen um, uh, characteristic, right? If for once I get this um, upper yield, right, Y, then further increment in the load, right? Now we get uh, the ultimate point U, right? However, after ultimate point, what happens is the necking will form. The necking will form, right? This is how the necking has formed, right? And with re at the reduced area, at the reduced area, right? Here onwards, the area will reduce drastically, and further the breaking load will also reduce. Breaking load will reduce, right? Therefore, in such a case, it will break at a reduced load with formation of the necking. With formation of the necking, right? That is how. These are the different salient points of this stress strain curve, of this stress strain curve, right? Therefore, once I have this curve, then what now I will do is that I will measure, I will measure, right? I will measure using a scale, a scale, right? Therefore, now I have this plot student, right? Where it, now I will draw, now I will draw. I just, I just, I just taken that paper and I am drawing a vertical here, right? And as well as a horizontal, horizontal. And now I am measuring, um, measuring using the scale, right? Using the scale, right? What is uh, now? Now I'll drop the verticals, right? Verticals starting, starting from, starting from this point L. I'll drop a vertical, right? Where it meets on the x-axis at L prime, L prime. Therefore, L L prime. Now I'll measure this using the scale, right? On this, right? I am just measuring this, right? Therefore, I just measured L L prime, L L prime. Now I got uh, that length as 3.4, 3.4 centimeter, right? This is how L L prime is 3.4 centimeter, 3.4 centimeter student, right? This I just uh, measured. Similarly, uh, from the elastic point, elastic point. If I drop a vertical dotted line, it meets on the x-axis at E prime. E prime. Therefore, we also measure this coordinate E E prime. That is obtained as once again 3.5 student. Hardly there is a, a small change, right? Likewise, uh, the uh, uh, upper yield point, upper yield point, y y prime, right? By dropping a uh, uh, dash line, now I get y prime, right? Upper yield this is a lower yield. However, both may be there, may not be there. Here I, I have right there for y y prime, right? Therefore, that is now 3.76 centimeter, right? And if I drop a vertical from u, right? If I measure this ordinate u u prime is 5.71. This is how 5.71. Now you can see this is ultimate load, ultimate load. I'm just measuring this. Now I'm getting this as 5.71, right? Therefore, I just noted down that one. And even now we can see that at the breaking point. Therefore, there is a uh, after breaking now the specimen is losing the contact therefore there is a zigzag zigzag uh, movement of this curve right meeting at the bottom right therefore that is how I just noted this point where onwards uh, the curve is becoming zigzag means losing contact with the specimen that's it that is now 4.2 that is how now you can see it is 4.2 all these are just measured and I'll also measure this uh, um, Abscess of O B prime, O B prime, where B prime is uh, is obtained by dropping B, B in the vertical fashion, right, parallel to y axis, where it cuts B prime. Therefore, if I measure this O B prime, O B prime, it is obtained, it is obtained as 8.1, 8.1 student, right. This is how just uh, I have this abscissa, 8.1, right. Therefore, now I will have all the observations from this stress strain cup stress strain cup and next 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 observation is already while conducting the experiment you already noted down the yield load right the ultimate load and the breaking load the breaking load right therefore they are also noted down right and further for calculation of the um, strain energy or the resilience res proof resilience right proof resilience and resilience and fracture i need to measure i need to measure what is the area what is the area under the curve under this curve.
curve, right? Therefore, what is the area under this curve? I need to measure. Therefore, that will be done by means of by means of a planimeter. A planimeter. Therefore, this is a planimeter wherein wherein we do have this is the main scale students, right? Wherein on the main scale I do have zero zero to once again ten ten divisions are there, right? And on the vernier on the vernier also there is. A point indicating zero, as well as even hundred divisions are there. Hundred divisions are there, right? Therefore, that is how. Now, this pointer is indicating zero. Pointer is indicating zero. Now, I'll start. I'll start. I've just adjusted the planimeter, and I'll start from the horizon. The horizon, right? Therefore, I'm just there at the horizon, right? Therefore, now I'll move, right? After fixing this zero, and that of the vernier also zero. Now I'll start, right? From our, uh, uh, horizon, and I'll go just along the curve like this, right? Therefore, I'm just moving along the curve, wherein, wherein I'm there now, almost, right? Almost at uh, uh, this uh, yield point, right? Now I'm, I'm just moving towards the ultimate, right? To breaking, right? To breaking. Therefore, I'm just catching this total area under this curve, right? Area under this curve. Therefore. Now, after coming back to the to the horizon, right? Now once again, I'll explain, student, right? Just uh, we'll be putting this, right? And we'll be adjusting, we'll be adjusting this uh, main scale, main scale, right? Main. This is called the main scale, student, right? Uh, where this is uh, pointing towards the uh, needle, right? It should be zero. And as well as this is vernier, wherein we do have hundred divisions, right? Therefore. How we need to do once again? I'll explain. We need to put this over the arrangement, right? And this needle should be pointed to this horizon. Horizon. At that point of time, we need to adjust this main scale to zero as well as the vernier scale to zero. That is the first. We need to achieve that those zeros, right? Therefore, and you should take care that uh, whether you can move this along the entire. Uh, area of the curve that satisfying that only you need to fix this position this position right after fixing that uh, after putting this needle to zero you ensure the main scale reading zero vernier scale reading zero therefore you just go along the curve right now that is all i am moving along that curve i am there at l now i am there at e right i am there at y right and now moving towards Ultimate. I am there at ultimate. Now I am there at the breaking. Therefore, even I am just moving along the profile of this curve, right? Now I am. I have reached the horizontal axis. Now I'll just move towards the intersection of horizontal vertical axis, right? Therefore, by the time I come once again to the horizon, horizon, right? Therefore, by this time it gives a numeric value on the main scale reading, on the main scale reading as say. Now this uh, order of order student, right? Therefore, it is uh, giving this uh, uh, main scale reading as five, five. Now even you can see that it is showing five, right? And on this vernier, forty-three divisions are there. Therefore, means that is point four three, point four three because forty-three divided by hundred, point four three. Therefore, it is five point four three inches square. This will give. The area, this planimeter will give the area in terms of inches square. Uh, most of the apparatus uh, in our laboratory are in FPS units. FPS units, right? Therefore, once I note down this uh, inches square, you can convert that in terms of centimeter square, right? And uh, even the, these loads are already noted down, right? Uh, yield load, ultimate load, uh, breaking load, breaking load, right? Uh, then let me just note down, uh, note down those uh, loads also. Uh, those loads also right uh, now you can do the rest of the calculations the rest of the calculations to it right that is how the uh, experimental procedure experimental procedure right now now we will see another experiment um, uh, on the torsion testing machine right okay students we will meet after this for the torsion testing machine right thank you students Yes, student. Now, uh, even uh, while exper uh, experimenting, we already noted down the readings, right? As yield load from the 
while they are treating the load loaded physically, that yield load is 0.9 tons. And as well as the ultimate load, ultimate load is noted from the dial gate as 1.3 tons, right? For this given specimen, and the breaking load is noted as 1.1 tons, right? 1.1. These are the from the dial gate readings. You have noted on physically, physically, right? The per, uh, with these inputs, now you need to calculate all the stress strain characteristics, such as what is um, what is the elastic uh, limit, elastic stress, yield stress, ultimate stress, ultimate stress uh, from the dial gate reading. Stress from the dial gauge reading and the braking stress, the braking stress and the proof resilience. That right? proof resilience right? uh, means how are proof resilience means oh, we need to calculate, we need to calculate area under this curve, right? O e e prime, e prime, right? Now um, uh, even we can do using that R R in our experiment. What now we are doing is. Proof resilience is calculated using the formula F squared divided by 2e, where F is the, the uh, yield, yield stress, yield stress obtained from this calculation. calculation. Therefore, if you substitute that, we will get that R automatically, even you can do, you can find out using the planning meter area, the area O L E E prime 0, right? For which we, even you can do the calculation akin to that of the Resilience at fraction. For resilience at fraction, we are given this area O L E Y U B B prime O. Therefore, that area is equal to 5.43. Right? Substituting that in the formula, you will get here the resilience at fracture. Resilience at fracture, right? And finally, even uh, you need to calculate percentage elongation using this O B prime. O B prime also, right? This is how you can calculate the required stress strain characteristics and report them as the result as for the given mild strain specimen the following are the stress strain characteristics and so you report all these results report all these results right even you can calculate the inference calculations also such as what is ultimate stress by yield stress right and also what is the breaking stress by the ultimate stress and also resilience and fracture to proof resilience just comment them in the uh, uh, separate reading as comment, comments, right? Therefore, this is of the experiment on the tension test. We shall also see the next experiment on the torsion test. We'll see them uh, immediately, right? Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> hey, students. <coughs> Once. Uh, uh, we have seen the uh, how to conduct the experiment right now I just removed that um, piece of paper from the um, drum and this is what the plot I got uh, by the autographic uh, uh, plot uh, which is drawn by this autographic arrangement on this Amstel's universal um, uh, testing machine right therefore now I am uh, drawing the vertical as well as the horizontal right pa parallel to this uh, um, line right now I am dropping even the vertical the uh, no, verticals right therefore this is my uh, zero load right and uh, this is the um, proportional limit right this is elastic limit right this is the yield yield point y and uh, this is my ultimate point right and this is the breaking point beyond which the specimen is lose, uh, losing the contact with the um, uh, specimen right the the machine the machine is losing the contact with the specimen therefore it uh, cuts at b prime therefore now you draw the verticals therefore it is l l prime and e e prime y y prime and u uh, u prime and b b prime therefore these are uh, now uh, uh, measured using the scale measured using the scale now let us see the observations also right um, then uh, the observations are like this the length of the specimen under the test is equal to uh, 20 centimeter or 200 mm and diameter of the specimen initial diameter is equal to I've just measured using the veneer calipers as I would explain in the um, while conducting the experiment right I got 6.22 mm and diameter of the uh, section at the breaking small d is equal to 5.31 
uh, mm student right and the sectional area the sectional area initial sectional area capital a is equal to pi by 4 d square it now works out to say 30.37 mm square and the breaking section area small a is equal to also it works out pi by 4 multiplied by 5.31 whole square which is a 22.133 mm square and radius of the pulley small r um, 13.02 mm let me show that right radius of the pulley means right uh, this one right um, this is the radius of the pulley and whereas uh, this is the radius of the drum right this is uh, 13.02 whereas uh, the radius of the drum capital r is equal to 28.05 whereas the uh, area once i measure the area under this uh, uh, curve starting from this origin to l to i'll just uh, take the um, planimeter and i'll just uh, traverse along this ol right along this uh, e y right and u b and i'll come along this up to b prime and i'll go back to um, r is n right therefore i obtained that uh, result that result as say actually this planimeter will measure in terms of the inch squares right that I already explained while conducting the experiment i got 5.43 inch square therefore that multiplied by 2.54 whole square now it works out say 35.03 centimeter square or uh, uh, 3503 mm square as appropriate these are the different observations what i had just now um, we had this stress strain curve auto autographic plant therefore now i am measuring using the scale i got ll prime is equal to 3.4 cm and ee prime is equal to 3.5 cm and yy prime is equal to 3.9 cm and uu prime is equal to 5.1 cm and bb prime is equal to 4.2 cm and, and ob prime that uh, um, uh, abscissa is equal to from origin up to b prime is equal to 8.1 cm 8.1 cm also another observation is that uh, uh, while conducting the experiment uh, i have just noted what are the uh, yield stress as well as the ultimate stress and uh, that ult uh, ult ultimate stress uh, from the dial gauge i have just noted that as uh, that as say 1.29 tons 1.29 tons now i'll explain that uh, during these are my different observations while taking the uh, uh, while conducting the experiments right now once uh, uh, once i take the different observations right um, now let me do the calculations therefore now i'm showing the calculations to that for first um, uh, stress strain characteristics characteristics is the limit of proportionality which is equal to ll prime multiplied with this uh, constant 250 divided by area right how we got this 250 already explained it this is in terms of kg per centimeter square therefore i'm substituting that ll prime is just now measured from the plot Uh, that is equal to 3.4 cm that multiplied by 250 is a constant that divided by 0.3037 cm square it now works out say 2798.81 kg per cm square or 29.98 kg per mm square or upon multiplication of 9.81 it works out say 274.2 newton per mm square or i'm rounding off to the nearest integer as say 274 newton per mm square or mpa is the limit of proportionality for this given maelstrom specimen similarly the elastic limit elastic limit is uh, ee prime however ee prime is equal to 3.5 cm that multiplied by 250 um, multiplied by 9.81 divided by this area now it works out as i explained right i'll get 282.23 or say approximately 282 newton per mm square right similarly the third one is the yield stress which is yy prime however yy prime is equal to 3.9 3.9 therefore that multiplied by 250 uh, divided by 0.3037 multiplied by 9.81 or it works out say approximately 298 newton per mm square to the nearest integer right similarly the ultimate stress from the graph right is equal to uu prime multiplied by 250 divided by area however uu uu prime is uh, uh, 5.1 therefore uh, that multiplied by 250 divided by 0.3037 it works out in kg per cm square that multiplied by uh, 9.81 therefore now i'll get uh, around 411 newton per mm square and also you have noted right uh, the ultimate uh, uh, load from the experiment therefore uh, that is noted as 1.9 tons therefore it is equal to 1290 kg Hence, the ultimate stress from the dial gauge reading is equal to that ultimate load divided by area. Therefore, that 1290 divided by 0.3037. It works out say around 
around 416 newton per mm square right and also the breaking stress is equal to bb prime however bb prime is equal to 4.2 multiplied to 250 divided by however here that area is equal to area at the breaking reduced area is equal to 0.2213 please make a note uh, of student previously we were substituting substituting initial area 0 0.3037 cm square now it is the area at the breaking section 0.2213 therefore it now works out say around 465 newton per mm square right however you can see that uh, this breaking stress itself is much more than that of the ultimate stress ultimate stress right either right because of reduced area because of this geometry is reduced because of that uh, it is increasing though even the breaking load is also less compared to that of the ultimate load but nevertheless the areas drastically reduced right or leading to the cup and cone uh, arrangement right therefore much ductility uh, is indicated by this cup and cone right if right then if no cup and cone is formed then it is presumed to be a brittle failure brittle failure right now however i got a, a, a good elongation now let me also calculate that one right before that let us see what is that uh, proof resilience uh, in strength of material we have derived this proof resilience as f square divided by 2e per uh, right uh, resilience is nothing but it is the strain energy stored per unit volume therefore however young smallness of the steel is a standard value 200 power 5 newton per mm square and f is the elastic limit just now we obtained in the previous step it is equal to 282 282 newton per mm square therefore if i substitute that now it works out 282 whole square divided by 200 to power 2 into, 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square in terms of that one therefore it is around 0.1982 newton mm per mm cube means this much of strain energy newton mm per one unit volume right uh, i'm writing that up to say fourth decimal or third decimal right whereas uh, the next one is a uh, resilience at fracture is equal to s yes, area under that curve multiplied by r by r multiplied by 250 divided by that volume right now if i uh, uh, but what is that area under that curve we already found out using planimeter therefore it is 35.03 that multiplied by small r is equal to 1.303 divided by 2.805 right is a ratio that multiplied 250 divided by area is equal to 0.3037 centimeter square and length is equal to 20 centimeter square right it works out say 656.52 kg centimeter per centimeter cube however now you convert this in terms of newton mm per mm cube it, work, it works out say 65.65 newton mm per mm cube mm cube right and finally the percentage elongation is given by this ordinate from origin ob prime multiplied by r by small r by capital r multiplied by 100 divided by l therefore however ob prime is already uh, uh, noted as 8.1 that multiplied by 1.303 divided by 2.805 uh, multiplied by 100 divided by 20 centimeter therefore it works out say 18.1 percentage, 18.1 percentage. Therefore, these are my uh, final, uh, sorry, 18.7 percentage. Therefore, these are my calculations, right? However, now I'll also calculate uh, what are the inference calculations, right? Uh, uh, the ratio of the ultimate stress to the yield stress, it is now 411 divided by 498 which is equal to one point approximately 1.38 it indicates that the ultimate stress is 1.38 times the yield stress is one inference right whereas the uh, ratio of the breaking stress to ultimate stress is equal to 465 divided by 411 it is approximately 1.13 means breaking stress is 13 percent is more than that of the ultimate stress right because of the reduced area right and the resilience at fracture to resilience a proof resilience it is equal to 65.65 divided by 0.198 which is 331 means the strain energy stored at fracture is almost 331 um, uh, uh, times the proof resilience is almost 331 percentage more compared to that of the proof resilience compared to that of the uh, strain energy stored at um, elastic limit right that is a, a large value that much of reserve strength will be there student right till failure right that much of reserve strength will be there right that is the indication of the reserve strength therefore this data we already examined therefore now i will report finally the results right therefore these are the results the stress chain characteristics of the given multi specimen that first one limit of proportionality is equal to 274 uh, um, newton per mm square and elastic limit is equal to 282 newton per mm square and yield stress is equal to 298 newton per mm square and ultimate stress from the um, uh, uh, um, graphical uh, from 
the uh, graph what I have just noted is 400 Newton per mm square and from the actual observations right it is equal to 416 Newton per mm square and the breaking stress is equal to 465 Newton per mm square and proof resilience is equal to 0.198 Newton mm per mm cube and resilience of fracture is equal to 65.65 Newton mm per mm cube and the percentage elongation is equal to 18.7 percentage right and these are uh, uh, these are the inferences what you already examined right this is how the uh, tension test the tension test on the uh, mild steel rod student right i hope you enjoyed the discussions uh, uh, in today's class what we had right if you have really enjoyed don't forget to click like share and subscribe to our youtube channel we'll meet in the next class with uh, the spring test where we'll find out to uh, we'll find out the stiffness and modulus of rigidity on this same universal testing machine right Till then, bye bye students.